In this video, we're going to see another application, another typical application of the tuple data type. So previously, I, saw, I told you that tuples are like immutable lists. So whenever you use a list, but you don't need mutability, I suggested that you would use a tuple instead because this forces you to um, write code that doesn't change um, the, the value of a tuple. But there is a second um, view of uh, how we want to use tuples, and that is that of a so-called record of data. So let me give you an example, and then um, you will easily understand that. So tuples as records is what we call the file. So suppose the following. You have um, two values, two independent values that have to be modeled together all the time to um, constitute some meaning. So for example, think of a Cartesian plane, so an X and Y coordinate. So a point in a Cartesian a plane usually is um, known by its coordinates, like an X and Y coordinate, right? So given only one of them, you don't know what the point is. So it doesn't make sense to view a point as only one number. It has to be two numbers. So let's say uh, a point in the Cartesian plane. How can you model that? Well, obviously, you, we call it x and y in math, but how could you model that in Python with what you have learned so far? Well, one way would be to use, for example, a list. So let's say if I want to model the point, let's say, as an example, the point um, 1, 2. That is the point we want to model as a as a um, Python product, so as a Python object. We could write that as a, as a list object with one comma two in it, for example. That could be a point. However, I told you that it's not such a good idea um, to uh, use something uh, that can be mutated if you don't plan on mutating it. So if a point is, let's say, at position one uh, comma two, and you, you know for sure that you don't want to change the coordinates because every point has like unique coordinates that don't change throughout its lifetime, then probably it's a better way to use a tuple. So let's say one comma two would also be a nice model of this point. And also it looks kind of uh, like a tuple because in math notation, when you write a tuple, usually we use parentheses. So why not make Python code look like math? Well, that's a false friend. You should not um, model something a certain way just because it looks nice there should be some other reasoning behind that. So um, let's um, assume the following. We know that this view of, of, a, of a data point as a collection of fields, this is what we call a record. So maybe let's um, summarize that here. It's like an important idea. So a collection of so-called, let's call it fields, is a record. Now, where do these uh, fields and records appear most often? So how can you think of them in real life? So another example would be, let's say, let's think of an Excel file that I have for my course. And um, in the Excel file, every row is a student. And I may have a column, let's say, for your first names. And then I have another column for the student's last names. And I have another column for the uh, student's age and so on, and the grades and, and whatever. So in this Excel file or CSV file, every row is a record a record of a student, okay? That is another example of what a record is. So let's first um, um, take the example of the Cartesian plane here, and then also uh, make a second example um, of modeling students in a class. So we agree that um, there a record is something, is a, as a, is a collection of independent, otherwise independent fields that only together make sense. And let's assume we don't want to change them. If we later on want to also change the values of, an, of a record throughout its lifetime, then you have to wait um, until chapter 11 classes because that is um, um, a good application of object orientation. But for now, let's simply assume we want to model records that we don't want to, ch to change after we created them. So we are going to use tuples, but tuples do not uh, tell a story. So there is a better way to do that. And the better way is to use something from the standard library there is a module in the standard library called the collections module, and it has something in it called named tuple. Okay, so a named tuple already sounds um, like um, it is uh, related to a tuple, and it is. So maybe let's go ahead, and uh, let's also maybe before we do that, give 
the point a name up here because we are going to compare it to what we are uh, about to build. So how can we use a named tuple? So what the named tuple uh, function here does is it is a function that creates for you something that we would refer to as a class in chapter 11. But for now, we can also refer to that as a constructor. So remember in chapter two, we said callables are built-in functions, constructors and user-defined functions. So constructors are simply things we can call and constructors are used to create objects of a new data of, of this data type. And similarly, we are now going to create our own constructor. That is how you can think of it. And more formally, this would be known as a class. So let's do that. Let's create a class or a constructor that is called point as, as a point in a plane, for example, in the XY plane. So a point is defined as a tuple, so as a named tuple that has a name. So the name is usually um, also the variable. So usually the variable could be anything, but usually the, the variable that we store the, the constructor in and also the name of the constructor usually is the same. So if you don't know what to put here, simply put the same thing here as a string. So to indicate that this is the name of the, of the constructor. And then we're going to give it a list. It can be any iterable, but we give it a list. And in the list, we are going to, to define as string objects, the fields. So a coordinate is made up of an X and a Y. So let's do it like that, X and Y. And now I'm going to run the cell. And the result of that is that I now have a point class, a point constructor. So what can I do with that? Well, quite easy. I'm calling it a constructor because we can use it to construct new objects. So let's do that. Let's construct a point in the same way as we would construct, um, for example, uh, or in the same way as we would use any other built-in constructor, we would call it, okay? So it's callable. And uh, so it's another example of a, of a callable. And um, let's go ahead and give it the two um, values one and two because we want to model the point one, two. And we get back a representation that is a bit nicer than simply the um, tuple not uh, notation up here, okay? So if I ask Python, what is P? Then uh, P is one comma two, which looks kind of nice, looks like in math, but it's really a tuple notation. And here we see that one comma two is a point. So it tells more of a story. And it says one comma two is has a meaning. It has the meaning of X and Y. So let's go ahead and store that in a variable. Let's call it point in lowercase. And now let's compare the two. Let's compare P and point. So what can we do with it? So I will do that with by reviewing the four um, properties every sequence has because tuples are sequences and named tuples are also sequences. So what are the four properties? Well, the four properties are um, at first the container property. So let's check that. This is the int uh, op, um, the int operator. So let's check if the number zero or the number one um, is in P and it is. Let's check if the number one is in point, in lowercase point, right? And it is. So in other words, name tuple behaves like a tuple when we use the int, uh, when we use the in uh, operator. Second, let's use um, the second property, the size property. And the size property basically means the object supports being passed to the length function as an argument. So let's ask what is the length of P? And the answer is two, because there are two coordinates in a point. Let's ask what is the length of point, lowercase point, it's also two. Okay, so it works. Let's um, look at a couple of more properties. Let's see if we can loop over them. So if I say for coordinate in P, print coordinate, this works. I can loop over it. Let's see if I can loop over it in reverse. Uh, in let's see if I can loop over point as well. And it also works. Okay. And now let's quickly do that. Um, also, the fourth property. I wanted to review the four properties which I call reversible. And we can simply uh, check that by using the reverse built-in and we can pass P to it and we don't get an error message. There's no type error, it works. And uh, we could also say, we could also reverse uh, point lowercase, also works. So what do we learn from that? So the consequence is named tuples, 
behave just like normal tuples. That's the big um, consequence that we are over the big conclusion. And also all the other things that you can do with tuples, you can do with uh, name tuples as well. However, um, name tuples also model the semantics. So what is the semantics of the problem here? Well, the semantics are really here that a coordinate is really an X and a Y. So how can we, um, how can we uh, use that? Well, we could ask the point, what is its X coordinate? And I get back one. I could also ask the point, what is its Y coordinate? And I get back two, okay? So by defining up here, when I um, defined the point constructor, well, by defining x comma y or x and y, um, Python remembers that. So the point object, the lower cost po point object, now also has an x and a y attribute on it. And just to compare that, if I try to access x on p, on the p object, I of course get an attribute error because the normal tuple does not know what uh, x is, right? It, we, we, it does not know about the semantics um, of the problem. So, um, that is how we can um, yeah, um, design tuples and give it some semantic meaning. And usually what we do is we uh, model some record of data with it. Some, and a record, again, is a collection of otherwise independent fields. So that is what we can do uh, with the example of a point. But now let's also do a second example. And the second example is the one that I told you, the one of a student. So maybe let's go ahead and uh, say other example, students in a course. And let's say I want to create a student constructor and this is also going to be a named tuple for now. And the student, um, well, the, the student constructor has a name, first of all, it is going to be called student. And now let's define the fields of data. So first, a student may have a name. Second, a student may have an age. Third, a student may have a GPA. Okay. Next, a, st a student may have, maybe let's put that uh, uh, in the third position here, a hometown. So let's say city where the student lives. Okay. So these are the fields that the student object should have. So now we have a student. So let's say we have a student A and the student A is going to be um, a name, a guy named Achim and the person is 20 years old and let's, let's 20 be um, an integer. So there is no typing here. So we, we can use any, um, an object of any type for each field. So this could be uh, enforced by later on um, learning about classes. So classes are really the, the, the next, uh, natural step to take after named tuples. So named tuples are really like a short version of going into object orientation. So the Achim is 20 years old and maybe he lives in Berlin and maybe he has a GPA of, let's uh, use a German style uh, GPAs. Let's say he's a good student. So let's say he has a GPA of 1.0. For uh, non-German students, um, 1.0 is usually the best grade you can get at the German university. and depending on uh, the scale, either 5.0 or 6.0 is the worst grade you can get. So let's define student A. And let's also define a student B. And student B may be um, a woman. Let's call her Bertha, German name. She may be 21 years old and she lives maybe in Frankfurt. And let's also give her a GPA of 1.0. And now if I ask Python, hey, what if A and B? It tells me, well, it's a student by the name of with this age and so on. And now we can say, what is the name of A by saying A dot name? And it simply tells me Achim. I can also say B dot, let's say uh, GPA in all uppercase, and that would be 1.0. So probably um, if you read in chapter uh, one um, about coding conventions and in Python, usually variables should be lowercase or lowercase. So maybe a good practice would be to lowercase everything, but I will leave GPA uppercase for now. This is uh, good enough. So the main learning from this video is that whenever you have to model records of data, so records as a field of um, otherwise unrelated data points, and you want to always have these data points together, a natural way to do that 
um, in the Python world would be to use a tuple. Okay, so that it would be the, probably the best way because it's immutable and it puts together many, many unrelated, otherwise unrelated objects together in one. And um, um, yeah, and if you want to go that uh, route, then probably the better way is to simply go ahead and use a name tuple right away because then you can have everything a tuple can do. So all the functionalities of a tuple are still there, but you can teach um, your program, so to say, some semantics of a problem that you are defining. Or a problem that you are solving. So if you are writing software, for example, that captures um, the crates or that manages the crates of students in my course, then probably there is going to be some student constructor somewhere because students always have the same fields, right? And also note how when we talked about um, lists um, in the beginning, uh, in the very first example where I showed you a big nested list, um, I said, I told you that in lists we can have heterogeneous data and the reason why is because the data are not in the list, really. The list only holds references to the then heterogeneous objects. But it's not a good idea. So if you use a list, you should usually have homogeneous data because you want to process all the elements in a list with the same operation. And in order to uh, make sure that this works, usually the data type of all the elements in the list should be the same. It should be a, a homogeneous list. Same holds true usually for a tuple. If you use a tuple as an immutable list, However, what we see here now is, when the, with the student example, what you see here is that um, some of the fields are strings, like the name and the city, but some, uh, so the age, for example, would be an integer, because assuming we are simply modeling whole years, then it can only be a, um, an integer. And the grade has to be a floating point number, because grades in between uh, the full grades have to be possible. So now, um, here we have a tuple with um, heterogeneous data, and Whenever you use a tuple to model a record of data, then modeling heterogeneous data is quite normal, okay? So when you use a tuple as an immutable list, then you, usually you should have homogeneous data. But when you use a tuple or a named tuple to model a record of data, then um, using or having heterogeneous data is, um, is absolutely okay, right? Of course, in the long run, there will be more sophisticated ways to teach your uh, code uh, semantics. Um, this, again, will be... Uh, talked about in uh, chapter 11, when we talk about object orientation in detail. But for now, um, this is the first step where you basically def define a so-called, let's call it a blueprint. So the student class or the student constructor is really a blueprint of what a student is, of what, the f what fields a student has. And then you can uh, instantiate a concrete um, a student here, okay? so. A lot of that stuff will make more sense in the long run once you understand uh, object orientation. But for now, simply know that whenever you want to model um, a record of data in your program, you can use a tuple or a name tuple um, to give it some names, okay? So uh, that is the last video here covering uh, chapter seven. And in the next couple of videos covering chapter eight, we will talk about another very interesting concept. We will talk about data that um, we work on lots of data that is not explicitly in the, um, in the uh, memory. So we will talk about how to really run your programs in a memory efficient way. It's a topic of iterators and generators and so on. So I will see you in the next uh, videos.